All right, today we're taking a look at a block which is hanging from a string. And that string's been wrapped around a pulley, which is free to rotate around an axle. And what I want to do today is show you how to solve for the acceleration of this block as it's pulled downward by gravity. You see, the key idea in this problem is that this block is not in free fall. Because it's tied to this string, and because the string is responsible for making this disc spin, the block isn't just going to fall downward at g, or 9.8 meters per second squared. And so what we have to do today is consider the forces acting on each of these two objects individually in order to solve for the linear acceleration of this block. So what we're going to do is apply Newton's second law to each individual object. And we're going to start with the block right down here. Now Newton's second law says the sum of all forces acting on an object equals that object's mass times acceleration. Now looking at the free body diagram of this block, there's actually two forces acting on the block. The first is gravity acting downward, and the other force is the tension in the string. And the key idea here in this whole problem is that these two forces cannot be equal in magnitude. If they were, this block wouldn't accelerate downward. But going back to Newton's second law, what we're going to do is plug in these two forces into the sum of all forces term. But the key here in this problem is establishing a positive direction. And while you may be used to saying that up is the positive direction, what I want to do here is say that any motion that corresponds to the clockwise rotation of this pulley is going to be positive. So that is to say, if the pulley rotates in a clockwise direction, it's experiencing positive motion. But that would correlate to the downward motion of this block. So while it may seem strange, we're actually going to say downward for this block is the positive direction. So looking at our net force, or sum of all forces terms, we're actually going to have the weight of the block, I'm going to call that mbg, minus the tension in the string upward, equals mb, the mass of the block, times a. And you'll see, in looking just at this equation, we can't solve for a the acceleration of the block. The reason being, we have one equation with two unknowns. So what we're going to need to do here is look at our other object in order to generate yet another equation. Now it's tempting to try to apply Newton's second law to this pulley up here, but the issue is the pulley isn't moving in a straight line. So rather than applying f equals ma to the rotating pulley, we're going to apply the rotational version of Newton's second law. That is, the sum of all torques acting on an object causes that object's inertia, or its rotational mass, to go through some angular acceleration or rotational acceleration. Now, looking at this pulley, there's only one force that's producing a torque on this pulley around this axis right here, and that is the tension in the string. You see, if the string is pulling up on the block over here, it's going to have to be pulling with the same magnitude of force, but downward at the other end of the string, up here where the string connects to the pulley. And that force is acting at some radius relative to the middle of the pulley. That is to say, it's producing a torque. You see, torque is given by the equation rf sine theta, where r is the distance between the point of application of the force and the pivot point, f is the force that's being applied at that point, and theta is the angle between the force and the radius vector. Now, because we've got a string wrapped around a pulley, the string and the force through the string is acting at a right angle to the radius vector of the pulley. So all we're left with here is just the radius of the pulley multiplied by the tension in the string. And we're going to set that equal to the inertia of our disk multiplied by its angular acceleration. Now the inertia of a disk is given by the equation 1 half the disk's mass times its radius squared. And that's something that for most courses you don't need to memorize. But subbing that equation in right here, we're left with this function. And so we have a second equation, but the issue here is we have two unknowns, the problem being these are not the same two unknowns that we had down here. In looking at this block, we had the unknowns of tension and linear acceleration. But in looking at the pulley, we have tension and angular acceleration as our two unknowns. So really what we're dealing with here are three unknowns, which means we're going to need a third equation. And we can come up with that third equation just by relating the rotational acceleration of this pulley to the linear acceleration of this block. And we're going to do that using the equation A, the linear acceleration of the block, is equal to R alpha, where R is the radius of the pulley and alpha is the angular or rotational acceleration of our pulley. 
So now we have three equations and three unknowns, which means everything from here on out is just algebra. See, moving this stuff over. If we take this A is our alpha equation and sub it in here for alpha, we're going to be able to get rid of our alpha term. That's going to leave us with this equation relating the tension in the string to the pulley and the linear acceleration, or what we'd call the tangential acceleration, right here on the edge of the pulley. And you'll see, the radius cancels out nicely here, leaving us with an equation just for tension. And subbing that equation for tension into our equation down here we got from the block, we can rearrange this equation and come up with an expression for the linear acceleration of this block as a function of both the block's mass as well as the pulley's mass. And it's important to recognize here, the radius of the pulley doesn't show up in our solution. It canceled out, meaning the radius of this pulley is completely irrelevant in our calculations. So going back to this situation, plugging in the numbers given to us in the problem, we find the linear acceleration of this block as it accelerates downward is 4.9 meters per second squared. So this has been how to solve for the acceleration of a block like this when connected to a pulley that has mass. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.